Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today it's time for another episode. It's going to be delicious. I have got the most incredible recipe for you. An amazing, massive sausage roll filled with apple, fennel, sage, mustard. It's absolutely delicious. It's a showstopper, might I say. And then I have got savoury cheese crackers flavoured with marmite and walnut. It's going to be a good one. Right, time for the most epic sausage roll. It's gonna start with the filling, okay? So, I have got some good Cumberland sausage from Cranston's, which is a local butcher to me up in the Lake District. Absolutely delicious, really, really good. You can't have a good sausage roll unless you've got good sausage meat. And what you need to do is just take the sausages, cut them out of the skins, and just remove the skin. Okay, you could ask your butcher for sausage meat if you wanted to, and that's absolutely fine, but um, we haven't got a, an actual butcher in Keswick anymore where I live, so we're supermarket or farm shops or anything like that, but just, just order the sausages in, cut them out of the skins. Butchers must get so mad with me. They spend all that time putting them in the skins, and I just spend all my time taking them out of the skins, <laughs> but you know. Is what it is. They'd make a good sausage sandwich though, wouldn't they? They would. They're a good size, these ones. These are the thin ones. I quite like a thick Cumberland sausage though. Oh, do you? Yeah. So oh, I, have, I don't mind. But Cranston's are good. Yeah. They are a good butchers, I must admit. If anyone ever asks me which Cumberland sausage to go for, I do tend to send them that way. Remember that, Cranston's. <laughs> right. There we go. Okay, so I've got my sausage meat there. I'm just going to put that to one side. We're going to flavour it, okay? Fennel, pork, fennel, apple, absolute killer combination, okay? So take the core off your fennel and then take that middle core that runs out the middle there because that never really renders. So we get rid of that. Get rid of the bottom there. Pop those in there. And then let's just treat it like you would an onion, okay? So chop it down the middle and then cut in the pip. You will not want fennel, I promise you. All right? I love fresh fennel like, fresh fennel like that mm. more since that you introduced it. Yeah, I use it. I think I use it far too much, to be honest. I'm always using it. I think it's better raw. Yeah, I like, yeah. I, I, I think it, it, it does more raw. It's crunchy, it's crispy, it's got more yeah. of that aniseed sort of flavour. So I'm, all I'm doing is just chopping it all up nice and fine because I want it to cook at the same time as the sausage meat. So it's important that you chop it quite fine. Otherwise, you just end up with massive big chunks of vegetables running through it that aren't cooked. Okay. Oh, it smells good. It smells like perno. Oh, not that I drink perno, but it just smells really fresh and aniseedy. I learned in Tuscany to start putting pork and fennel together. I never really, oh, really, I never really came across it before until I went over to Tuscany and then all of a sudden it was like everything. Yeah. Pork. pork and fennel, tomato and fennel, fish and fennel. I, it was always a classic combination in French cookery was to do fennel and apple, sorry, fennel and fish together. Yeah. But I'd never thought of it. It works with chicken, works with pork. It's really, really good. Right. So let's chop this last piece up. Now, if you have any questions about today's episodes, post them in the comments below. I'm here to help, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's about this recipe or just any general culinary conundrum. I will help you if I can, all right? And if you want any of the recipes, just type in the comments below, free book. It will launch into Facebook Messenger and um, follow the instructions and we will deliver you automatically by the magic of computers um, a free ebook with 20 recipes, all about Britain's best bakes. Um, just lots of really nice classic recipes that we've 
tweaked, enhanced, raised the profile flavors of. We've got some really nice images. Emily spent loads of time taking some fab images that will just make you want to get in the kitchen and bake, okay? So get the book, free book, all right? And if you want any of the gear that I use in the kitchen, just go to cookserveandenjoy.com. You find everything there that I use, all right? Okay. Right, that is my bulb of fennel. Now, right, I've got my fennel and I've got my sausage meat in there. It's time to get some sweetness in. So we've got a cooking apple. So it's not too sweet, but it's sweet enough. Apple, fennel, and pork. A nice baking apple. Bramley apple, this one is. It'll be perfect. We'll just get it peeled, and I'm going to grate it straight in. You ruined your streak. I know. I didn't get my streak, did I? No. It's only because I'm doing one. The bigger challenge is three in a row, I think. <laughs> that is the bigger challenge. You passed the, the one yeah, the I've moved on. Stage. I've moved on from that. Right. Let's grate this straight in. So why why are you grating the apple? Um, I just want it to sort of. I don't want big chunks of apple in there. I just want it to sort of add a bit Fair of sweetness. Though. And what, what it's going to do, what you have to be careful of is, and I'm going to get to this in a minute, is when you're adding moisture to this, it's like the enemy of pastry. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that you counter that. And we're going to use some breadcrumbs and an egg just to sort of absorb the moisture, the excess moisture that's in there. So I'm just grating the apple in and this will sort of just blend into the mixture and give that all round sort of sweetness. Okay, so I've got a few fennel seeds just to reinforce, they can go in. And then I've got breadcrumbs, okay? So these are dried breadcrumbs, not fresh breadcrumbs. Because I want to absorb as much of that moisture as I possibly can. Before we add that, sage. Pork loves sage. It's, it's the classic flavor, but not too much, because if you use too much, it becomes a little bit metallic-y and a bit weird. So you've got to be careful how much you add, especially if you're using dried sage. But this is fresh, just straight from the garden, about a teaspoon, straight in, and then I've got some nice flat leaf parsley. We don't like curly, do we, Emily? Nope. <laughs> and then we're just gonna chop this nice and fine. So this will give a good freshness to the whole thing. Think Greg's and then as far away as possible as a Greg <laughs> sausage roll as you can possibly manage. Okay. So, sorry, Greg's. Not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> and in with our parsley. Okay, there we go. Right, we're going to give it a little season. So I've got some pepper going in there. Now the sausage meat that we use will have been seasoned already. So we don't need to go crazy, but just a little bit will help. There we go. Right. Last ingredient, one egg. And then get your hands in and mix it all together. Like that sound? <laughs> Not a fan? No. Okay, so you can kind of see that it's just like a, a ball now. It's kind of, the breadcrumbs have absorbed the moisture. The only thing I have forgotten is my mustard. Emily, can you open my jar of mustard? I'm covered, I'm, I'm in a mess. It says I'm going to be able to open it. The magic arm, that is Emily. Right in with a tablespoon. I've gone whole grain this time because I don't want it to be like rocket fuel and too hot. I just want it to add to the whole flavor combination, okay? So in with the mustard and then we are done. It is pastry time. Okay, time for pastry. So I've got some puff pastry, just a straightforward block from the supermarket. Nothing fancy there. All I'm gonna do is cut it in half. Now one half is for the top, the other half is for the bottom. And we're actually gonna lattice this, so just 
when you're rolling puff pastry, get out of the fridge half an hour before you need it, but don't press down too hard because otherwise you'll push all the layers out to the side. So quite light rolling, light and often rather than like really putting all your weight on it. Don't do that. Just keep rolling it, keep moving it. There we go. So that is what? That's about 40 centimeters long. And then I'm just going to get it to about 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters by 40. That's going to be our base. Okay, now our top is going to be slightly different from we're going to lattice this and I'm going to show you how and what that means in just a second. But we want it about the same size, but just a little bit bigger. Okay, so not quite as small as the base. So lots of gentle rolls and then just measure it up. So I'm about the same length. I want it just a little bit more and then also just a little bit wider. Okay. How have you found the bakery series so far, Emily? It's been really, really good. One of my favourites. Yeah. There's been a lot of tasting gone on. Yep. <laughs> a lot of tasting on this one. So, and if, if you also, look, if you're enjoying the show, or, you know, if you've got any comments on the show, please post them in the comments below. That's what it's for. That's how it works. Let us know what your thoughts are. If you've got a particular series in mind that you'd love to see us do, let us know. You never know. I might be able to arrange it. Okay, so we're going to take some of our sausage mix and we're going to lay it down the middle. All right, so just take your time. There's no rush. You want to get it, you know, Decent round piece. I'm not, I don't want this some skinny little cocktail sausage roll. This is a proper, this is a centerpiece. This is almost a main course, this. It's not, you know, something that just rattles around in your lunchbox. It's all about the sausage roll on this one. Okay. There we go. Do you have sausage rolls in Spain, Carlos? No, oh, he's plugged in. Carlos, do you have sausage rolls at home? In Spain? Do you have sausage rolls at home in Spain? Why not? What? Do you not you do pastry much? No, I don't think, no, you know, like, really as a pastry country, really. No? No, as I can remember. No, at least not in my area. No? Are you a fan of sausage rolls? I like them, yeah. Yeah, yeah you see, everyone loves a sausage roll. <laughs> Everybody. In fact, I tell you what, in America, they're not called sausage rolls, are they? What? No, they're called pigs in blankets, which really? opens up a whole new world of confusion for us <laughs> because a pigs in blanket is not a sausage roll in England. A pigs in blanket is a sausage wrapped in bacon. All the protein. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So, got the sausage meat there down the middle. I've got a nice clear area that I can get some egg wash all the way around, okay? It's important that you don't skimp on this because you want it to all sit nice and hold together. And now I've doubled the yolk on my um, egg wash. So I've done one egg and an egg yolk. So it means I get an extra lovely golden color. So these, these lattice cutters, you can get these anywhere really. I think I bought this on Amazon. Um, and it just works really, really well. So, have you got one of these? Use these? I've never used one before. Have you not? Actually, no. Oh, watch. So, little tip for you. Don't start here at the edge. Can you see that? Uh, yes. You need to start just in on the pastry so that you can hold the pastry as you turn. So all you need to do is just run it all the way along, like so. And then you've got this lovely like net almost. Oh, wow. You see? <laughs> and you just pull it apart, just to make sure all the cuts are in, yeah, before you lay it on the sausage meat. 
I mean, you can do it with a knife if you've got the patience. I have not. <laughs> so I use a machine to do it for me. There we go. Well. There you go. It's just changed your little world, that, hasn't it? And if, if any have just not quite cut through, just use a knife and just score it, and it'll open them out. It's going to change your whole sausage roll game, this, isn't it? Yeah. Or pigs in blankets. It's just confusing that, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. Oh, there's one. That one's important. Okay, so my lattice cutter has done my job. There's just the odd one. It's just missed, but that's okay. We can go over those. And then I'm going to fold it in half so that I don't overstretch it. And it means that I've got some... Some some sort of stretch to work with and then we can then start to tuck it round the edges okay so tuck it in and make sure you've got everything pressed in there's one there that hasn't opened that's annoying me there we go that will stretch open as as it bakes there we go and then what we're going to do is we're going to trim this. There we go. Don't worry, we're not going to waste that. See, it's a posh sausage roll, isn't it, Emily? It is. Eh? There we go. Right. Now I've got a baking mat. This is a silicon baking mat. I'm just going to carefully Lift this bad boy straight on. There we go. And then with our extra yoked egg wash, so we get a really nice golden color. And it will golden up really, really nicely by adding that extra egg yolk, especially if you use good eggs. Really good yellow, deep yellow eggs. I remember when I was in sort of Michelin star world, we'd have to glaze everything three times before it went really? in the oven. Yeah. So you glaze it, chill it, glaze it, chill it, and then glaze it again. Good Lord. And then it was allowed to go in the oven and not until. That just to inch you with a shine. Yeah, just to get absolute maximum, like golden crispiness. There we go. Few fennel seeds on top, I think, just to reinforce that beautiful flavour. And then that is going to go in a preheated oven, 180 degrees, and it's going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes, making sure it is golden and crisp. I'm going to check that it's cooked in the centre. I'm going to use a digital probe and make sure that it's above 75 degrees Celsius. That that way you know it's baked in the middle. Right, sausage rolls are baking in the oven. Do not want to waste your trimmings, okay? Just knead them all together really quickly. Now, this is puff pastry, but not anymore because I've scrunched it up, but it's still pastry, okay? So you're still going to get a nice, you know, roll out of it. I've got a little bit of sausage meat left, so I thought you had to show you how to make very quickly how to make an old fashioned normal sausage roll. All right, so we've just quickly rolled that out. There we go. Just put that back together. You can make little cocktail sausage rolls. Take the last of your sausage meat that's left and just roll it down the middle. Nearly there. Literally, just make as much as you've got left. All right, so I've got a little bit left there, so I'll trim that off. Trim that off. Egg yolk mixture on your near side, okay? Because then we just roll it up. There we go. And make sure it's all encased. 
that's it. A little bit of flour on my hands. And then we're going to cut these into little cocktail sausage rolls. And we're going to bang these in the freezer for another day. So when we need them, all you need to do is take them straight out of the freezer. I'm actually going to egg wash them as well while I've got the egg wash. Don't want to waste it. I'm going to get them all egg washed up. And then I'm going to put them on a plate lined with a piece of parchment paper in the freezer. I can literally bake these from frozen 170 degrees C for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're golden. No waste. And you've got that extra little bit in the freezer. Marmite's one of my favorite ingredients of so this recipe is a cracker. First thing you need to do, room temperature butter into a mixing bowl with your grated cheese. And in with your egg yolk and in with the Marmite. Use an electric whisk, cream together until all the ingredients are fully incorporated and it becomes a sort of pale brown golden color. Then add in your plain flour, add in your walnuts. You could use any kind of nut if you wanted. Back in with the mixer and just continue to mix it together. Then turn it out onto worktop. Using your hands, squeeze it together and roll it into a sausage. Once you've formed that shape, place it in the fridge for an hour and chill it down so it's much easier to slice into portions. Nice, thin, half-centimeter discs, then place them onto a baking mat. Bake these biscuits at 170 degrees until golden and crisp, and then you have the ultimate Marmite snack. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. Just to recap, we have made the most delicious walnut and Marmite savory biscuits. Perfect with a lump of cheddar and a glass of wine, if I do say so myself, and then a showstopper of a sausage roll. You can see how golden and crispy the sausage roll is by adding that extra egg yolk. The lattice has baked up beautifully. All those beautiful flavors of fennel, apple, mustard, pork, absolute work in a treat inside this buttery pastry case. You know you wanna make this recipe. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.